welcome back to Subject to Change. This is Chad. And this is Matt. And How you been this week, Chad? I've been alright this week. It's been a busy week. Kind of a tough week. How about you? Uh, it's been less busy for me. I've just been, you know, trying to find a job and do all that fun stuff. But uh, is there anything um, that you've been thinking about more, you know, lately or was, anything that's caught your eye? There's, there's always stuff that I'm thinking about. Um, as far as more personal stuff lately, I've been thinking a lot about backpacking since this is prime backpacking season. Even though it's still 90 degrees outside? Well, today is not prime <laughs> backpacking season, but I tend not to backpack in the summer because it's just miserably hot. Yeah. When it's 90 degrees and 100% humidity, it's not fun. Are bugs still a problem in the fall? No. Bugs are like midsummer more. Yeah. Especially the bad ones like yeah. ticks and, and mosquitoes, chiggers and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is that, yeah. And um, kind of decided that after summer, I wanted to try to take a backpacking trip every month for the rest of the year. So one in September, uh, October, November, and December. Did you do one in September? Uh, I did. Yeah. At the very end of September, I did one just about a week ago. I went to Red River Gorge and spent a night out there. Had to be at work the day I woke up in the woods, so it was kind of a quick trip, <laughs> and I had to hurry up when I woke up. Yeah. But I did a... I shot some footage while I was out there, put together a little bit, little backpacking video. I've done that a few times in the past, and um, mostly just for my own enjoyment and for my family's enjoyment. I kind of originally had plans of maybe trying to turn that into a thing. Like, and, like posting them online? Or? Yeah, I, I have a YouTube channel that they're on. But originally I had thought about maybe um, trying to kind of get into the online backpacking community and, you know, do advertising and stuff. But with everything else that I, I have I, going I, wait, on. Wait, wait, wait. Advertising, like for Cliff Bars or something? Well, or? maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you There's said a, that, that's the first thing that popped in my head. It's like you, like, go, like uh, peeking on like a... Uh, a mountain side or something, and then you <laughs> and just reach it into your bag. It's like I mean, cliff bars, and you can I, hear your voice like <laughs> reading an advertisement. I do love a cliff bar, but <laughs> there are uh, now a sponsor of Subject to Change. If only <laughs> there are a lot of backpacking backpackers out there who kind of fund their hobby with their YouTube channel, hmm. with um, ad revenue, ad, with ad revenue, and with um, uh, sponsorships. Not necessarily. Not like YouTube, I, like a YouTube sponsor, or like, do, are the are the channels that big? Because you know, like, they're not they're not big enough for no. that. But mostly just um, like people will send companies will send them free gear oh. if they use it and if they review it on their channel or something like oh, that. Okay. So originally, I thought, hey, maybe I can kind of subsidize my uh, backpacking hobby with my YouTube channel. But with everything else I got going on, I mean, I'm usually trying to do a blog post about all my trips, so it's yeah. hard to do a blog post and. It'd be a uh, blog post. And, yeah, I could. So I'd have to probably stop doing the blog if I was going to do that. But um, Stop doing the blog. Stop doing the blog if I was going to do, do a vlog. Uh, if I was, yeah. Because you said stop doing it. But anyway, yeah. so um, do you have a trip laid out for October? You said um, you want to... Do you have trips laid out for the rest of the months or are you waiting for those like to get... For, for the most part, around? I just have some trips in my head and I will take them when I can. It's just, it's hard, it's hard to put concrete plans in place sometimes because you don't know what the weather's going to be like. Yeah. Um, like if it's going to be 90 degrees in October. Yeah. I, I don't always know when I'm going to have time off. <clears throat> sometimes trails are closed and things like that. So it's just good to have um, multiple trips kind of planned ahead of time, mm -hmm. roughly planned ahead of time so that I can do them when the time comes. But I in, in October this month, I was... I'd like to do something in the Smoky Mountains. Haven't been there in a while. Never backpacked in the Smoky Mountains. Um, I just... <laughs> my brain was like, the Smoky... Uh, oh, yeah. I know where those are oh, now. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like four hours away from here. And yeah. I, I I'm haven't, like, what? And I haven't been there in years. Yeah. But I, I'd like to do that. And I have some other... Nothing huge, but I have some other little overnighters and stuff planned in, in the tri-state area. That's nice. So I'm I'm hoping to do that. That's... One per month for the rest of the year is the goal. It probably won't happen because I never get to do it as often as I want. It's, yeah. So much stuff comes up. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get out there. So I've been thinking a lot about that lately. Um, I recently had a death in the family, so that's kind of been occupying a lot of my time and my energy lately. Makes sense. 
I uh, went up to Michigan for the funeral last week, and that was uh, I was up there for four or five days, and um, you know, I, I've had a, a about a good week where I didn't think about a whole lot of stuff other than that. It's yeah. just a lot to do with the funeral and the viewing, and yeah, that's and understandable. Being with family and sorting through things, so kind of haven't been paying attention to the outer world a whole lot. Lucky for you, I have been, <laughs> I, I, if you're interested. I thought so. I, I, <laughs> I suspected that you might have. Yeah, because uh, on a rare occasion of these discussions, I brought notes of a couple things that I uh, cared about or thought about this past week, um, or just in general, uh, recently, that's been in the news. Um, I wanted to actually start doing these more in depth, like, weekly things on my own channel, but I, I couldn't think of, like, separate from Subject to Change, since Chad and I have talked about Subject to Change being more of a, you know, you know, big idea, long discussion about certain things, but we kind of wanted to start, like, this, pitch this idea to each other about doing these short-form things, but, um, uh, recently, that's been big in the news, uh, for me, obviously, impeachment's been huge. Yes. Um, the impeachment inquiry that's been going on uh, for Trump and the Ukraine phone call and the the, the Hunter Biden um, uh, corruption thing in Ukraine. And it's like it's been more that's been more on my periphery, uh, considering it, it's going to be a slow moving process. Uh, the House has to acquire a bunch of information. They have to subpoena people. They just recently subpoenaed um, uh, Rudy Giuliani. Um, for, I don't think for testimony, but just for some paperwork, um, in relation to everything, because, you know, uh, Giuliani's been, his name's been thrown in the pot by Trump. Uh, William Barr has been thrown in, who's the, uh, the DOJ, uh, attorney general. And, um, you know, all this like pot stirring has just started with this, um, and all the things related to that, like the, 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 oh, like, like Trump's tweets, regarding the whistleblower and how he wants to um meet him he wants to be mm -hmm. confronted by his accuser even though it's not a criminal thing it's yeah. something else uh how on twitter he talked about uh he essentially incited the idea of civil war if he gets removed from uh the office so all that crazy shit's been going on mm -hmm. um but aside from impeachment um which i haven't followed at all at by all. the way uh the, the the whole stink about well not really a stink uh, the whole thing around uh, Greta Thunberg mm -hmm. from Sweden the sixteen year old and the climate yeah. strike and all that stuff and yeah um, this past Friday there was another well I, I, as of this recording this past Friday there was a uh, a climate strike with the, the student climate strike all over the world I think that's going to keep keep happening on Fridays because that's how it started in Sweden mm -hmm. um, with her and her recent um uh un uh talk where she gave her speech i don't know did you hear anything about that i or? did you showed me the speech the speech yeah okay. <clears throat> we, we watched that last, um, last time we were together and all of like the right wing backlash she's getting for you know being a child and how she obviously since she's a child and has asperger's which makes her quote unquote mentally ill which means you know she can't come up with her own thoughts and you know she's obviously being hamstring by adults in the left wing uh propaganda machine whatever mm -hmm. you know all those talking points have been coming up and that's been um that's kind of died down since you know the news cycle is the way that it is but she's obviously keeping up with her activism which is nice to see and inspiring a lot of uh, the youth um to get out there and talk about climate change another big thing um which happened uh recently um in relation to this is in relation to this podcast uh, recording is the first Republican debate happened, primary debate. Yeah. And I think I sent you uh, a clip of it. Maybe I, I think I no, might. I well, it was, you know, it, when you were doing all your stuff. Yeah, maybe you, know, maybe when you, you did, were When you were in Michigan, it. and I, you know, I didn't yeah, want to push it. I was kind of checked out. Yeah, which, I, which is, you know, understandable. Um, but there was a primary debate on Business Insider, their Facebook page. Hmm. Um, not on TV. <laughs> Uh, between Bill Weld, who is the former Massachusetts governor, mm -hmm. and Joe Walsh, who's the former Illinois uh, representative. Yeah. And um, there's another person, I didn't write his name down, who's also running in the primary, but he didn't show up. 
for the uh, the debate. Right. Um, and it, you know, the parts that I saw, I think I got in about two, three fourths of the way, two thirds in or whatever. It was like over halfway done. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I heard it was, you know, it was really interesting. You know, I didn't really know much about Bill Weld. I knew a little bit about Joe Walsh just because of his like uh, his public persona with television and how he was very much a, uh, you know, like a, a Fox News type hyping rhetoric around Trump and like immigration and all this kind of like really negative uh, stuff, which is, you know, I didn't really keep a keep an eye on any of that. Um, and then, you know, learning about Bill Weld, how he apparently ran in the 2016 race as Gary Johnson. I was just going to say, yeah, that's how I knew yeah. a little bit about I didn't, him. I didn't know that because I didn't really follow the uh, the independence um, in that race. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the 2016 race was huge for right. many reasons. Um, but I, to was, learn that, I was following the libertarians in that Yeah, race. to learn that he's like, you know, like, and I we, we've talked about this before, if you're political leanings um, and a couple other people that are more you know, fiscally conservative, but socially liberal type people. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he fits that bill. I I looked into his record. Um, he's, you know, been pro gay marriage. He's been, uh, pro abortion choice. Um, very, you know, very socially liberal for, for a conservative. Yeah. Um, but you know, fiscally responsible, he talks about the deficit and he talks about those sorts of things. And, you know, as you would expect from a, like a, a general, like nineties conservative, that that's what he reminded me of. Um, so th- those are a couple things that I, that really, I, you know, was intrigued by recently. Um, something that just came up very recently, I'll be quick about it is, um, uh, SpaceX unveiled a new, their new project, a new heavy, um, rocket called Starship. Yeah. I saw that today. I didn't look into it yeah. much, but I'll have to, I watched the, um, the, comp- the, that. the press conference essentially that, that's the heat that Elon Musk gave in Texas. In front of the uh, ship. And it's really interesting. It talks about how, you know, next year they wanted to start doing launches for like in, into like to orbit. Yeah. How it's going to be reusable just like the like the Falcon rockets, um, which I don't know. Did you see the like when they did the Falcon heavy tests last year where the um, the uh, the rocket boosters yeah, I, came off and then they yeah, landed? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was following that last year. Yeah. A big thing about like that. Elon Musk talks about his reusability to cut cost, obviously, because mm-hmm. he talked about how to, to launch all the old spaceships that went, you know, in the 2000s, the 1990s, you'd build it and then you'd have to scrap everything once it was done. You know, you couldn't reuse anything right. except for the actual spaceship, you'd right. have to, you know, new boosters, new, new fuel canisters, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> um, so that was really interesting. Um, so I'm going to try and keep a, like, I, I subscribe to... SpaceX's Twitter and their fate and their um, YouTube to, to keep in you know keep up with that news as it comes along because he said he, he wants to do an, uh, a test launch in a month of that uh, but within a month of that uh, thing that unveiling essentially so maybe late October November and then a year from now he wants to have like you know orbital launches and that sort of thing okay um and then other than that uh i just was interested in because we talked about i don't remember when this was if it was our political engagement one or a different conversation we had off off mic but we talked about direct democracy and yeah. like voting and stuff like mm-hmm. that so i you know i want to learn more about that concept of direct democracy and found out that switzerland is like one of the only countries that is like 90% direct democracy oh, where yeah. every citizen votes on everything. Huh. I don't uh, really know that much about Switzerland. So that was really interesting to, um, to dig into yeah. and uh, learn a little bit about. That, that is interesting. I, actually, I've been thinking a little bit about that too uh, because I'm reading a book right now and this is, this is one of those books that you read at exactly the correct time in your life. Yep. I'm reading a book called uh, The Conservative Sensibility by George Will. I don't know. You know who George Will is? He's a, know. He's a columnist, and um, he's a he's very much a constitutional conservative, which kind of translates into classical liberal slash libertarian. But yeah, but, but he's um, the book. I'm only about halfway through the book, but it's there's a lot of stuff in there about the conflict that me and you have. Yeah, about how 
the government ought to work. Yeah. And he's talking about, well, he, he, ta- he talks a lot about progressive, constitutional progressives versus constitutional conservatives. And there are some passages in that book that, that is, that is us to a T. Yeah. It is exactly <laughs> the debates that we've had. Nice. Not on the podcast really yet. I think we did a little, we got a little bit into this. A little bit, yeah. With the political engagement one. Um, but th- there's a lot of stuff in there about protecting minority opinions from majority opinions and a lot of stuff about um, the unalienable natural rights that can't be violated even by majority opinion yeah and well, things I like think that we was that the conversation we had two weeks ago we had this off not on the podcast yeah i can't but we talked about this quite yeah, a bit yeah 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 off the podcast i mean we've talked about this I wish, several i wish times. we had recorded that now yeah yeah. Oh, well. well, I'm, I'm in the sure future, that we're going to get into that more. Yeah. <clears throat> because that seems to kind of be, I mean, there's, I think there's a disagreement about that that's kind of simmering beneath the surface of a lot of our discussions. Yeah, I think so. Where, where I kind of dis, where I did, where I, I don't know, I don't really know how to put this. There's been a lot of things where I agree with you that it could potentially help the country or that it could potentially be for the greater good or something like that. Yeah. And yet I still think that we shouldn't do it because it violates some individual liberty that we have. Okay. And we have a lot of conversations like that and we kind of dance around the whole thing, the whole concept of the constitution and, and, rights and and we've never really talked about that those concrete no we we haven't and Mm -hmm. it seems like a good thing for us to talk about i i mean i kind of wanted to at some point we were talking about having a public disagreement and trying to get to the bottom of something and this was going to go a long way towards that i think that this this was going to be a big part of that yeah um uh, well, what do you what do you think about? I mean, do you think that the direct democracy thing is a good idea? Like, do you think uh, like should, maybe I should give you maybe I should set this up with a more specific example? Sure. Well, while, while I, I don't know, let's just say while you're thinking, I was just gonna talk about direct democracy since I brought it up. Uh, just quickly, what I've learned about it, um, you know, just to contrast, uh, Switzerland is what someone would call a direct democracy. Um, and America is a representative democracy. Mm-hmm. So the way it works is uh, in America, in the USA, we vote for representatives, you know, our representatives in the House of Representatives, um, our senators and things like that to take our views of how the government should run to the political forum to be changed. So we know so so that they can vote on the laws, on how money is spent on you know all those all the political jargon and all that stuff we we vote for them so that we don't have to know to make our own votes so you know there are certain things like in the state level that we can vote vote on like you know vote yes on blah 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 or vote no on right. title two you know that sort of stuff but, right it has mostly to do with like public yeah. spaces and things yeah but th- we don't ever really vote on you know like how the military spending is going to be spent we don't vote on um you know, like to go to war. Generally, mm-hmm. as as a, as a citizen, we let our representatives make those choices for us because yeah. we assume that since we voted for them, um, they are going to hold our ideals as they go to the political forum. That isn't always the case. You know, I, I don't think that Mitch McConnell, for example, has really held the actual values um, and well-being of Kentucky in his head while he goes to Washington, but that's yeah. a different discussion. Yeah, and that's... <clears throat> well, see, even that's, like, something I'm not sure I even agree with you on that. Well, not about Mitch McConnell, but I'm not... I'm not sure I would frame it as we vote for people who carry out our will as our representative. I just... I don't really think about it that way, I don't think. I think that's generally how it's portrayed, though. How would you say that the... Oh, I think it's more like... We elect people who are going to protect our rights. Okay, that, that's that's which, a, a distinction is, we can have. A yeah, which is a different thing. About. But anyway, that's, but, I mean, but, we're kind of okay. So 
So but representative democracy, yeah. that's so, what it is. So what's Switzerland like? Direct mo- de- In Switzerland, uh, they do have forms of government. They have a parliament, um, you know, the House representatives, things like that, kind of like how we do. We don't have a parliament, but, you know, mm-hmm. same, like, levels of government. But, and they also vote on who becomes those parts of government. Okay. But in the direct democracy, they have three levels of voting. They have uh, the state level, which is the entire country, on things that every citizen can vote on. Um, and then they have what they call the canton, which is kind of like, I guess, like the state, like the, like, like in the a, United States, like, it's like a province, right? yeah, a province. State. So th- th- you can vote on those things in those provinces. And then they have the municipal level, which is like in your town, mm-hmm. um, or whatever. Yeah. And you, they, they vote, I think they said which? four times a year Okay. on different things in different levels. So, um, you can go in and vote uh, on a voting day. You can vote for a municipal law. Or a uh, an election for a representative that mm-hmm. who's going to be in the parliament, or you can vote for on you know uh, how funds are going to be used in your town for like a public works, yeah. or you know how laws are going to be impl- implemented on the state level, wh- whether it be like gay marriage or whatever. Or everyone in the country yeah. has a say on whether or not that stuff's going to get get passed. Mm-hmm. Like when when like with gay marriage. In the United States, that wasn't something that we voted on as right. citizens. It was something that was voted on at the, the, at the in the forum level, like high up in the federal government is where they made the distinction. But, you know, obviously there's some interplay between the base and the, the, the politicians, but we mm-hmm. don't go into the ballot box and actually say what we want. Right. Now, just a quick thing, like, just, like some of the, the hang-ups... The, the, the reason I, I, I stumbled upon this is because I, I wanted to find out what countries had compulsory voting okay. and what their rates of voting actually were. Like yeah. Australia co- popped up a lot and they aren't a direct democracy, but um, they're, they have compulsory voting and uh, their voting is like in the 70 to 80 percent range, I think. Uh-huh. Which obviously isn't one hundred percent. Yeah, what happens to those I, I th- other people? I, I didn't look into it, but I, I think that they get they get they get a fee. If they don't okay. vote, uh, I think this, Mexico's compulsory too. Huh. Um, and in some some places, it just said like in some places you get fined if you yeah. don't show up enough. Then you get like stricter penalties yeah. because it is the law. You're suppo- yeah. you, you have to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was curious about like the 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 level of voter turnout in a compulsory state compared yeah. to us, which it isn't compulsory. You don't have to vote if you right. don't want to. And man. I think we might have mentioned. Did we bring that up on the last podcast? I don't know if it was. I don't know if it's the political engagement one, or if, or if it, it was like that interim conversation we had but, about compulsory voting. But that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to look it up. Yeah, but man, the more I've thought about that, the more I've thought that's a terrible idea. Yeah, but we don't. Maybe we'll get into that later. But anyway, I'm I'm just still curious about this Switzerland thing. Yeah. So um, one of the things that comes up with direct democracy or any type of democracy is. Um, how like how long do, does do things take? How much do you really have a say in things? Um, and one of the hangups that they have in Switzerland is that the political process takes a little bit longer mm-hmm. because there are so many people that have to be like there's so many steps. Yeah, since everyone Seems votes, like that's probably a good thing that it takes longer. Yeah, so you know things don't you know talking about like political uh, changes mm-hmm. how they take a long time in a country like the United States where some things don't change at all right in Switzerland it takes a little bit longer since their political system is so uh, centered around the citizens having a say right um, and then they also had uh, a couple other things about how you know the, the, the slight majority on things and how that might not be exactly representative mm-hmm. and how that might be a problem that might be a discussion that we that you want to bring up about um, the constitution and the rights and how the majority yeah, and the minority do, thing. I mean, I, I assume Switzerland has a constitution, right? Uh, or do they not? Well, they, they have to have I something. I don't know if there's still a monarchy or not. Like a, cause I know that cause a lot of European countries still fall under that. Yeah. I know. Like democratic yeah. m- monarchical, right. Which I don't know much bullshit. about, but, but, I, uh, I, I mean, I can look it I'm up just, real quick. Well, okay. I, I'm, I, I I guess that is part of my next question, whether they have a constitution or not, but... Mm-hmm. Oh, they're, they're, they're not... Mon- uh, they don't have a monarchy. They're a federal republic. Okay, so they must have a constitution. Yeah. Okay. So we can... We can... 
we can revisit Switzerland once we learn a little bit more. But yeah. I, I thought that was interesting that, it, it, like, they're, they are very, and another big thing about them is a, a, a critique about direct democracy and how it might not work in, in, in the States, in the United States, is that Switzerland is very small. Right. Very small. I country. have heard about, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, and it's, so it's small and it's homogenous. Yeah. yeah. So it would be really hard for that kind of thing to really take off in the United States since there are so many differing views and things like that. But that, yeah. that's not to say that our own political system can't be changed for the better. You know, like getting rid of gerrymandering yeah. or things that kind of limit people's ability to vote or... Yeah. There, I mean, we could talk about the Electoral College, well, too, but... I'm still curious about whether you think that a direct democracy is a good idea. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you did ask that. Yeah, so, like, what do you think about that? So, so when I think about voting, um, I think of a book that I read about World War One, And it's like a lead-up to the war. So it starts in the 1890s. And it talks about the political climate of the world, uh, the aristocracy of Europe, and... Just like this old world framing and how it was getting kind of pushed from all sides for change. And a lot of the lords and people in the parliament in, in England who were, you know, to be in parliament or to be a lord, you had to be a landowning, you know, aristocrat, essentially. You had to be right in the the, the that part of society. Right. Like a, a lay person couldn't just become a, you know, in the parliament. Right. So... The, the general view is that they, the aristocrats and the lords and such, as people were just designed, essentially, to be the ruling class. Right. They, you know, they had year generations worth of experience. Mm -hmm. Like, their fathers and their fathers before them were lords or dukes or whatever. Right. And they felt that since they were the educated, wealthy class, that they were the ones who knew best what to do with the country. Yeah. So they were against uh, suffrage. Right. For even, you know... Of course. Even men. They, right. They would be. Yeah. Because... And, and it wasn't necessarily just like, oh, they're poor. It, it was mostly like, they're uneducated. They don't know the decisions they right. need to it, make. It, yeah. And, and things like that. I'm pretty familiar <laughs> with that, that concept. It's very paternalistic. And yeah. And they can't be trusted to make their own decisions. And... Yeah. Well, and there's a selfishness involved, too. But True. They don't want to compromise their own interests by allowing... <laughs> the masses to vote on exactly that. and that was kind of the, the problem that we're get that they were getting into in that time because you know the the labor movement was in full swing at that point mm -hmm. um you know wanting safer working conditions wanting better pay um you know wanting a bigger voice and that, like the whole union movement was huge at this time too like trying to give the worker more power than what they currently had because they felt like even in england they felt like serfs mm -hmm. still tilling the land for the kings mm -hmm. um but you know the, the 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 ruling class was very much against suffrage, partially you know because of the power, but also because they, they they felt like they were the ones that knew what the hell was going on. Right. So they they were in the best position to make that decision. Right. And so you know for me, we live in a country where every person over eighteen without a felony can well, I don't know can, can mentally ill if you have a severe mental illness can you vote? Too? As far as I know, oh, I wasn't sure, but. Pretty much everyone over 18 without a felony, you can vote. You know, there is right. no restriction. Correct. As long as you're a citizen, um, you can vote in whatever. There is no, you know, education restriction, no um, uh, financial restriction, essentially. Right. Um, I mean, you have to be able to get to the place, but that's a different discussion that we could talk about, like voter suppression, whatever. But generally, everyone can vote. And I, I'm kind of grappling with, with the idea of, you know... How educated should you be? This kind of goes back to our political engagement discussion. Yeah. Um, should everyone get a say, even if they're not politically engaged mm -hmm. and they don't know what they're voting on? Is right. that good or bad? Like right. they have their voice, but they don't know what they, they don't know what they believe in. Yeah, like, that's that's a legitimate problem. I agree. Yeah. So whenever I th whenever I think about that, like should they get a vote? It always makes me think of that ruling class. Um, argument about like not that i'm saying that i'm for the ruling class or whatever i'm right you know you know pr i'm pretty progressive um but just like how how important education really is for these kinds of um uh actions right you know you want an educated voter base 
that's why they, the, that's why the ruling class back in the, the the turn of the century were like we're the we're the educated ones. We know what we need to do. Like we understand politics. We understand right. diplomacy. Yeah. And I understand why they thought that. Yeah. So if it would be better if we could extend that kind of knowledge out to the populace, but you know that comes down to like we talk about the political engagement thing. It's like people's time, people's interests, um, whether or not they care, and things like that. So it's like it. it I like the idea of direct democracy to answer the question finally, um, because it gives everyone a chance to vote on everything. And I like the idea of having a say because I like as a person who is yeah. politically involved and who has strong opinions, I like to be able to vote on, are we going to war? Do I think so? No. Mm-hmm. Or yes or whatever. Right. Um, instead of putting it up to these people that maybe I didn't vote for, like right. Mitch McConnell or, uh, Thomas Macy, I think, is my representative for our district. It's like, I didn't want either of them in power. I mm-hmm. voted against both of them. Okay. So they don't hold my views. And that's what I meant yeah. before about, like, you vote for the people who you think are going to hold your vo- views in the political forum. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and I, th- I think that we're in rough agreement up until that point. But uh, what I'm more concerned about is... The point about them the- representing our views and it's not just protecting our rights. Well, that's what you said before. Uh, yeah, that's what I said before. But what, what I'm more concerned about is whether you think people should be able to put to vote something that would violate our individual liberties, and 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 if that passes by majority vote, then that's the law. So, for example, I'm drinking a beer right now. Should we be able to say, "Hey, let's"? Um, there's a lot of people who don't like drinking. It causes lots of problems. It's not good for you. You know, let's put this up to a vote and see if we should ban alcohol, which we've kind of done. Yeah. Which was a terrible idea, I think. See, but I, my question is, do you think that that's – maybe this is a bad example because it sort of has happened. But do you think that we ought to be able to do that? First, the thing I want to jump in on because I, I had to stop myself. Was prohibition voted on or was it just – like I can't remember. Was it just like the hand of God? This is going to happen. I can't remember, and this is a bad. That's why this is maybe this is a bad example because yeah. it's something that happened. You I, want me to choose a different example? No, I, I mean if you can think of another one that where because I can think of a bunch of them. Uh, I mean, go, they're, think of, they're think, endless. Yeah, then give me another one. Give me uh, another. Let's one. let's let's say that the majority of people decide that um, we need hate speech laws and that there are certain words that you can't say. You're saying a majority of people, like fifty one percent of people. Yeah, enough people are – however this would get introduced to a vote, enough people are in support of it that it gets put to vote and then 51% of the population votes that, no, you're not allowed to say these words anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you think – are you in support of a system that allows that sort of thing? Yes. Okay. See, that's – I'm in support of that system and the caveat I put on that is if you don't like the way that it came out, like the, like the, the vote or whatever, yeah. then – you know, try to overturn it, try to change political discourse, try to sway yeah. the people who, the 51%, try to sway them in but, a different, and that, that's what I think about the whole idea of, if things don't turn out the way you want them to, and yeah. you have the ability, like, yeah. this also comes down to having the ability to, to, to protest it, or to right. overturn it, or whatever, because, you know, if we take away the, the ability to, um, you know, even challenge the law, then I think that would be a bad thing. But you're, but in the meantime, I mean, I completely 100% disagree with you. Um, in the meantime, though, as we're trying okay. to decide, you know, we're protesting the law or something, you're okay with people going to jail if they say those words? That's where it comes down to, like, is the law... What's, yeah. How do I want to put it? Is, is the law... Well, because, you know, slavery was the law. Right. And people went against that, and they went to jail. I believe, like right. people who were like, so that's one of those things. It's yeah, like, but I would the majority argue. of people wanted that, or it was the law, and yeah. they needed to change it. That, that's, that's yes, but I I would say that slavery was against the principles of the Constitution in the first place. So mm-hmm. it was essentially happening is that we were overturning something that was unconstitutional and it violated okay. people's oh, I, I, rights. Okay. I didn't know we were t- okay. From the a constitutional standpoint, I was just thinking of it from a, a law 
and lawlessness. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that I mean, I mean the Constitution my... is like the the grand law, <laughs> right? That's kind of and my, I, uh, that yeah. was my next question was like, yeah. I mean, what about the Constitution? But I mean, let, I mean, even disregarding the Constitution, let's just say we were starting fresh. You know, me and you decided we can start our own country. I I, I disagree with you that I would put that sort of system into place. Yeah, yeah. How would you how would you counteract that? Well, I, I feel like we're already. Would you would you say that we're in that kind of space right now? Uh, more Cause than because like the, the Patriot Act um, is one of those things. I, I would I say think. more than we should be. Yes, but but for the most part, I do think that we still have most of our liberties. Well, yeah, I, but um, is there a is the ability to have them be lost through legislation, like lawful legislation? Mm-hmm. I think that's still a possibility. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying you would want to be in in a system that wouldn't allow that. Inherently, um, like well, could, I don't well, like you, you couldn't amend away the Bill of Rights. Well, I don't know. You technically, can't. I, I don't know if right. You're right. I don't know if there is a way to make it so that that's inherently impossible because you do have to make it so that. I mean, you do have to always consider the possibility that your constitution, whatever it may be, is wrong. might be wrong in some way. So you do have to have a system for amending it. I agree. Um, so I, I no, I wouldn't say that there must must inherently be no way to do that. Mm-hmm. But I would say that I want a society where that doesn't happen through some combination of the way that the that the law is set up and the way that the constitution is written. That combined with people's attitudes and beliefs. I think because you need because you need both. I think the bigger part of that piece though is the attitudes part, and less some less. So much as the constraints of the law mm-hmm. and how that's done is how people think. Like if you can't change people's thought process about how things are done mm-hmm. in a constructive way that leads to a more, I guess, egalitarian view towards everyone's well-being, then you might fall into these traps of, you know, people legislating things that are, you know, maybe morally wrong to them yeah. and they think that they need to be... Mm-hmm. The law, you know. I mean, I would like to think that the court, that, that the judicial branch would still strike down that kind of stuff. And I think for I, the I, most part it does. I, I think it all, I mean, in, in the real world, you mean. Yeah. Uh, in, 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 but in this theoretical 51%, 49% okay. world where, you know, hate speech is illegal. Yeah. I, I feel like that's like on theocratic level, um, uh, like dogmatic kind of thinking where you know if enough people in the country feel a certain way yeah then they're then it's gonna start shifting things in that direction and i I think that's true you know if you look at like theocracy is one of the best examples because they are very you know totalitarian in their views and are very like moralistic um and they have a lot of things that we would consider you know humans human right violations because they don't see people's basic rights right but uh but I, i think that you know some place on it like Iran or something like that, right. where they are a theocracy. If fifty one percent, I mean, I assume it's probably more because of the country. But let's say fifty one percent of the country was like, yeah, you know, um, X thing needs to happen. But it, you know, in the world stage is like, well, that's actually bad because you know you're you're you know mm-hmm. you're demeaning this one sub subsect of people. Yeah, it's like, well, that doesn't matter because you know the majority of our people follow these rules and those people are law uh, unlawful. Because of their whatever, and I, I, I it, it's completely possible. Am, am I saying I want to live in that world? No. That's, but, well, but that's I, kind of my question. That's kind of my question: is that do you want to live in that? world? I don't want to live in the world where those those attitudes are real. But I believe that generally, I, I mean, I, I kind of want to put my foot in my mouth and say like the wrong thing. But it's like well, I'm not trying to gotcha. Well, you. I, I know you're not, but I'm trying not to gotcha <laughs> myself either. You know, I just want to know what you really think about it. I, I know, <laughs> and I do too. <laughs> but it's like I, I, I like the idea of the majority. I, I, okay, but uh, uh, okay, I, I, okay. So I don't like it if the minority, whatever it is, has control over the majority. I don't like that because right. then the general, you know, feeling is that. What the most people want isn't happening yeah. for one, one reason or another. Like uh, uh, someone someone brought up this example the other day that 
uh, with the electoral vote of um, between Trump and Hillary is that Hillary got higher percentage of the popular vote, um, but Trump got the electoral vote, but the percentages were were off. So Hillary's was higher because of her vote stuff, but she didn't have the right electoral votes. Mm -hmm. So Trump's percentage electoral percentage was less. And then he sh the person showed a comparison of the French um, uh, uh, election with uh, Macron and Le Pen, mm -hmm. and Macron had sixty something percent of the the, the votes of the popular vote. Yeah, uh, and then Le Pen she had like thirty percent. Okay, and in that in in the system I'm saying is like yeah the sixty percent they're the majority they obviously have you know those thirty percent people right. You know, if they want to become the majority, they need to go out and they need to talk to people and they need to, mm -hmm. like, change the view of the people that are in the majority. That's how this stuff works. Okay. And that that's uh, my view is that mm -hmm. just because they're, they're in the majority doesn't necessarily mean they're right. It just means that's the cultural – I mean, we talk, I talk about this all the time. But you need to change the cultural view of how things are because that's the only way you can actually shift – you know, things politically mm -hmm. or societally is through the, the, the cultural uh, milieu. And I think the majority obviously has more weight in it because they are the majority. That's the whole idea behind that. Okay. But I understand what you're trying to say is that you don't want the majority to step on the minority's rights. Right. Now, yeah, like, what do you think about that? And I, I, well, here's what I was going to say with that is that <clears throat> if the majority does that, it's obviously wrong. Okay, it's wrong if they take away other people's rights because I believe in the, the uh, inalienable, inalienable rights. I believe in that um, for like human dignity and all that sort of stuff. Right now, that's where my revolutionary part comes in. Is like if if we for some reason, you know, me and you, if the United States become became a total totalitarian dictatorship overnight, yeah, and you and I as intellectual thinkers or you know, I'm an atheist. If we became Christian theocracy, that would infringe. They would probably infringe on my rights right. to exist. So I would want to revolutionize that. Right. And I think that while those things are bad, there isn't a way to combat them. But I'm saying the way I would want to combat them. Let's say it was a 51-49 vote. It's just to try and change people's minds. You know, try and open them up to discussion or whatever. It's to try and change the cultural. Uh, lens with which we see issues to take that example the religious one wouldn't you rather just live in a country where you're allowed to believe anything you want and that other people can't infringe upon that right yeah okay but i'm saying I, I guess i'm trying to work under the framework that we kind of live in is that we live in a majority minority voting system to where if for some reason all the evangelicals voted yeah. on something mm-hmm and they it got passed because the like let's say the Republicans are in power and that's just that's how it happens. Right. Then, you know, me as a progressive, me as a, a non-religious person who may or may not be persecuted by that new group, I yeah. want to change it. And I feel like that's another part of like this whole current political system is that people feel like with the current government, whether or not they've been actually persecuted themselves, they feel like the the current um uh feeling or the current mode that we're in can lead to more negativity like the whole heightened white supremacy thing that's been going on or right. whatever is it so we need to combat that some way some people protest it like the, with the antifa which i'm not really mm -hmm. for or the people who you know just try to have like debates and try to have conversations and yeah. try to change the you know try to combat trump on a intellectual level to try and change those views. But I'm saying if it got bad enough. I mean, it's. I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. I feel like we're still not really getting down to the point. I'm trying to figure out how to dig down to it. Okay. I, we, we already live in a. I don't know. With the white supremacy thing, I mean, we already live in a country where. It's illegal to commit violence or certain types of harassment. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what what are people fighting for in that situation? You you mean like the people who feel 
like the height there's a heightened level yeah of like i mean you're talking th- about like persuading our leaders to do something but why would they do anything when no laws are being broken at the current time i think the way i look at it is the you know how i said before how when we um elect a representative yeah they they're supposed to go with our views mm-hmm. um to the political forum yeah. to discuss it with the other representatives or whatever to make law which i think that might have been the original idea behind that like there's 10 of us but we can't all go to the senate right we're gonna take you know we all believe in x y and z we're gonna send jim with those ideas to rome to talk to the to the senate about what we think as a group. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the original idea for representative democracy is that we're a group of people who have, you know, like-minded ideas. Some of them might be completely, might be different, but generally, the, depending on the group size, we all have the same mm-hmm. beliefs. And we're going to send one of us to represent our group. Right. To, I think that's... To the political forum. Right. <clears throat> and I think the idea behind representative democracy is that, and that's why I portrayed it that way. Okay. Um, but since that's so far gone... Yeah. Um, and, you know, a senator can be in the same spot or a representative can be. I think a representative might have. Do they have? I don't think they have term limits. Representatives? Representatives do. do senators, senators don't. don't. Yeah. So, like a Mitch McConnell, since we're in Kentucky, he can be in the Senate for 30 years. Maybe he's holding the views of when he first got in there and the, mm-hmm. the people who voted him in then in the 80s. Right. So he's not really holding my views now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so. The feeling that they are there for my beliefs instead of kind of changing their own base. Because I feel like sometimes the politicians, we, sometimes people look at their politicians for what they should do. You know, oh, like, the, like, the, sure. like the demagoguery. Yeah. Where it's like, like, well, oh, you know, oh, anointed one who's in office. Right. How should we act? And then depending on how they act, some people, you know, are like, oh, my senator or the president is acting this way. That means I can act this way. So it's more of a top down thing than a, than a bottom up how it should be. Mm-hmm. The politician should be representing us, you know, be representative of us instead of us representative of, of their actions. I, Does that make sense? I, I, yes, it makes sense that you think that. I, I understand your opinion there. <clears throat> But I, you don't think that's, you don't think that's, I'm not true. true. You don't think that's true. I'm not, in, I don't, in, I don't really think of politicians as being representatives of like competing factions of people that are supposed to, you know, do something for the group of people that they represent. Now, I, I don't really agree with that. No. I mean, I think that the, the government exists to secure our rights and to, deal with conflicts between those rights and conflicts between the um you know the public and private sphere and things like that but i I don't think that i don't know i just don't think about politicians favoring this group of people over that group of people and i I mean i know that it. i mean i like the whole idea of a representative is that you're representing your group of people your district your state what have you i know that it kind of plays out that way well i don't i think it it's supposed to play out that way, but it doesn't because of corporate, you know, corporate uh, corruption. That's yeah. the word. But, you know, because it because if, you know, I think if Mitch McConnell actually cared about the well-being of Kentuckians, he would be more in favor of, you know, health care reform for, you know, the the. The opioid epidemic, Mm -hmm. he would be more interested in trying to secure a new work for the the coal miners. He would be, you know, because those are the things that they need. Yeah, but there's a legitimate, I mean, I'm not defending Mitch McConnell, but there's a legitimate, maybe this is part of what we're trying to get to, is that there's a legitimate case to be made that those aren't the responsibilities of the government. And I think maybe that's part of why we disagree about that stuff mm. because i i want the government to be small i want the government to be limited as much as possible to securing our rights and i mean like i'm not an anarchist like i've said before i don't want i don't think there should be no government i think there does need to be a government but i'm not for the government getting involved in lots of moral issues and trying to make our lives better in a bunch of ways i, I don't really think the government should do that 
See, I, I wish I knew more about, um, like, ancient and, you know, medieval... Well, mostly, I, mostly like Roman and Greek. I don't think you need to uh, though, political, but... like, just how how they how they ran things. Because I, I think my idea, like I, I think the big thing. Well, it's it's hard to think about this in one way for me because you know in Europe they all came from monarchy and had to like create you know all these rights for all the the lay people you know. Well, and, yeah, and, and it worked, take them it away from differently. Yeah, so it being in in this situation now, where it's like the whole manifest destiny thing of America and the individual, and you know, entrepreneurship and all that, all those things. We've talked about that before too. And I, I feel like maybe maybe that's the big the big difference that we have about the role of government is that I feel like government is maybe it's just because this is my interaction with it and how I've seen it through my life is that government has always been like the kind it, it, government to me has always been kind of like the paternal figure, you know, yeah. that I was talking about before that they are the one, like the government is looking out for you right in a good way. And that the government, like I've talked, you know, this is kind of like 1984 is like the government knows what's best for you, which I don't necessarily always believe in, but it's like, they know, and it, it kind of comes back down to my original point about the aristocrats, is that they know more about things than I do. Yeah. So, and w- this is actually another conversation I wanted to have with you in a later date about um, the whole idea of experts mm-hmm. and giving uh, leeway to people with more knowledge. Yeah, that is an interesting discussion. Um, this, th- this does lead into that. That will be yeah. have, yeah, on a later date. But it's like, I know... So I understand what you, what you and a lot of libertarians say is like the government doesn't know how I'm living my life, right. so they shouldn't try and steer it a certain way because right. I know how to spend my money. Right. I know what I'm doing in my town, and I understand well, that, that part of it. Let me let me correct that. It's not even necessarily that I know what I'm doing. It's that I ought to be allowed to make well, my own okay. decisions. Yeah, yeah. That that's the point Cause I was I'm getting. Because I, I should be allowed to totally screw everything up if I want. That's to. the point I was getting. That's the point I was trying to make. Is like. You know, like with Andrew Yang's platform about this UBI, he's like, "Who am I to say what you should do with your 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 security or whatever?" Right. You, you know, telling you you can only get a certain types of food with Wick or whatever. Right. It's like here's a thousand bucks. You know what you need to use it for. Mm-hmm. Use it how you need to use it. Yeah. I, that but that I I think you were getting to our. I think you were gonna say what our fundamental disagreement is, and I want you to say it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm getting there, <laughs> but I'm saying, and what I'm saying is that when it comes to the things that I don't understand or that let's say I do fuck up, I want, I want to know that I'm not forgotten, that mm. I'm a citizen of this, of this country, yeah. which has its government and that being a citizen that, you know, the government won't abandon me. Okay. And that, you know, since they know more about certain things that they can step in and be that helping hand or whatever. Yeah. And I think that when I when I talked about before about Mitch McConnell with the coal miners, is that if let's say the 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 state of Kentucky is a coal state, you know Appalachia, the 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 corporations are doing what they want to do. They're they're mining coal, blah blah blah. The Black Jewel that just this just recently happened. They're mining coal, blah 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 blah. And then, you know, the, the rest of the world, are, you know, it's like, ah, you know, we're going to start going towards green energy. We're not going to buy coal anymore. Mm-hmm. So what does Black Jewel do? They go bankrupt. Not to the not to the fault of the workers, not to the fault of anyone in those towns. They just go bankrupt and they leave. Bye. So what are those people supposed to do? I mean, they, they have the opportunity to get new jobs. Right. They have the opportunity to do something else. But that on paper seems really simple. Mm-hmm. But in actuality, it's really hard. So having the government step in and say, we are going to help you, yeah. not because it was no fault of your own, to you know try and entice with taxes or whatever, entice green energy to come to the area, mm-hmm. entice new things to come in here to help you because you are a citizen of this country. Everything that you've done with this industry has helped the country, so we're going to help you. And that kind of comes down to my other view about, you know, this is kind of ancillary, but um, about the whole wealth tax thing, which we can talk about too, which is kind of recent in the news about, um, you know, the billionaire class and how, you know, they're, 
these companies that, that have billionaire owners or CEOs or presidents or whatever, and their workers are making nothing. But the whole reason that they are as wealthy as they are is because of the people at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like they've obviously made like business decisions and things too, but they couldn't have a company without the people at the bottom. Right. And I think that we disagree about this too. Yeah. So what I'm saying, my, my idea with the government is that you can make whatever decisions you want to make. Like, I don't want the government to tell you you can't work at a coal mine or you can't work or whatever. Right. But if something happens to your well-being, um, that, I mean, that's why I, that's why I believe in the social uh, – the, the, yeah, the social safety net is that not everything you do is your fault. Right. And even if it is, you're only human. Right. Like you, And that comes down to, the, like, the, the whole Bernie Sanders thing with Medicare – he, he was talking about it on, on a Fox News channel, and he said, yeah, I, I think that, that you know, health care is a human right, which you don't, you don't agree with me with. But – and the, the, the guy said – I don't remember who it was. I don't know who it was, uh, one of the Fox commentators. But he said, well, where does that right come from, right. the right for, for health care? And he said, from being a human being, mm-hmm. like being alive. You, right. you, do, you know, and I, that's part of your – I do disagree with that. Yeah. And <laughs> – and – so, the government being this entity that it is, this big, you know, machine, whether it's good or bad, I think should be used to its powers to help those who have, you know, fallen to the wayside or who need to step up. And I, I think that it's not the idea that Mitch McConnell would go to, as the state representative, that's what he is, mm-hmm. him and uh, Rand Paul, would go to... DC and say, Hey, I have people in my state who need help. Yeah. Um, and they don't know how to do it themselves or, you know, this company left or whatever Mm -hmm. we need as the government in the United States, we need to do something to help them. Um, whether it be sort of some sort of subsidy for businesses to come into my state, whether it be some sort of program to help them transition to a different job, whether it be, you know, something and then let them go. Like, and and here's, that, that's where that's where my views come from. I'm not entirely. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't love the social safety net stuff, but I'm not entirely opposed to having some kind of general social safety net thing for everybody that is kind of applied equally. But I don't really I, I don't know enough about this specific black jewel coal mining situation to really speak about that. But I don't like the idea of the government picking and choosing who to help like that at all. I, I, because why? I mean, I understand that the, the situation sucks and it's going to be difficult for those people, but why should the government pick them over anybody else who's having any number of difficulties to help? I, th- I think that comes down to the representative, you know, that that's where like, but the, I don't, the idea that, Mitch McConnell represents what's supposed to be best for our state. Right. So he can look and see at the different dynamics of what's going on in, in Kentucky but and say, huh? But he doesn't know what's going on in my life. What if I'm having a more rough situation than those miners? Then the Why idea, don't I get help? Then the idea would be, you know, if, if in my mind, if things ran the way they were supposed to, people say, write your senator, write your congressman. Yeah. Then they would actually read what you write. I know that's kind of impossible now with how many millions of people yeah, live. But but the idea the is point. that you, your representative to the government, would you in this hypothetical is your um, issue something that was um, caused by the government in some way? Because I'd say that the Black Jewel thing might be related to... Well, yeah, that's why I was... That's why I said I don't know enough about that to to say. I mean, if it was directly caused by the government, then yeah, maybe the government should take responsibility for it. Okay, but, so, but, let, 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 I mean, let's take the same thing and let's just say that that company... Well, that company just well, well, you, screwed its employees. Well, you could say with Lordtown, um, the, the, uh, the GM plant, you know, you could tie that to NAFTA, trade, or yeah. whatever, and they left... That mm-hmm. town for some some sort of like oh money in China or Thailand or whatever yeah. should the government come in and say they they screwed you over let's help 
lot. Probably not. <laughs> I think that they, I think that they not only they should. I think that they are they are responsible because since NAFTA is something that the government did, it was supposed to help mm-hmm. the the middle class of America, but it didn't. You know that it's a, this is a very pointed uh, topic, but the idea that it's not not everything's insulated from everything else. Like right, and, and I think that's kind of the, the conversation I was trying to get with the the political engagement thing is that. Things are a lot more interconnected than we than we want to think. That we think that we're living our own little life, but we are as connected to our town or our state or whatever. And, you know, whatever bills pass will affect me, whether or not I had a say in them. Whoever gets voted will affect me, whether or not I voted. You know, those things to varying degrees, I suppose. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think like that. Uh, I mean, we can tie this back to the the, the, the majority minority thing. Let's say fifty one percent of people uh, wanted to, to to infringe my rights or whatever, but I didn't vote that time because voting doesn't matter. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Blah, blah. That would affect me more than you know another time than another instance of when me not voting doesn't matter. Okay. But <clears throat> I think the what I, the point I'm trying to get across. I feel like I've been talking a lot. Is that I. I like the idea of small government when it comes to, um, like, privacy, when it comes to um, my – I'm trying to think of other, like – I'm trying to, like, form, like, things where the government has, like, overstepped their bounds in my head. Um, When – like, privacy is a big thing, and I think you would agree with that, too. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to be spied on. I want to be left alone. I want to be able to do – to do what I want to do. Right. But I think that, I, I mean, the social safety net, I think, is a big thing. Whether or not people are going to use it or abuse it is, is beside the point. Is that I think for, for a country to work well, you have to be able to kind of help people when they stumble and then hope that they'll get on track. But I, And I feel like there, there's varying levels of what the government can and should do when it comes to like rehabilitating people or um, you know rehabilitating a town. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe maybe there should be a time when people should just say maybe you shouldn't live in Pikeville. There's nothing there. You should just move. But then it's like, how are we supposed to move? We don't make any money, and mm-hmm. it's like, well, how, you know, where do you go from there? You know, and it's it's kind of the feeling like, how, how do you deal with the most despondent and like downtrodden people in the in the country uh, to help it, w- when they weren't put in their position of their own volition, you know. Like if if, if yeah. I didn't, I, you know, with, with, the, with the coal mining thing, it's like mm-hmm. it, let's say coal mining goes away in two years or ten years. Yeah, what are those people going to do? You know, they've only known one thing, and I, I like the idea of retraining programs, even though apparently those don't go very well. But you got to find some way to. You know, reintegrate those people in, into the functioning society. Otherwise, you know. Well, that's up. I mean, you said it's up to the person, but I think right. that if they don't have any, if they don't have any recourse, mm-hmm. like if there is no other choice, like right. the only job in the town was the coal mine, now it's gone, right. and I don't have any money to move to a different part of the state because mm-hmm. it was tied in the coal mine. What do they do? Well, let's start their own business, do something. For their neighbors in exchange for food. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of things you can do. But I, I just... I, I, I think we're, I, we're talking about so many different things that it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to nail down anything here. But yeah, I, I, it, it's going to depend on exactly... I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe we should stop belaboring this point, but... I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying I want zero social safety net, but you seem to be saying something like, "Well, if we're going to have some social safety net, we might as well have all the social safety net." Well, I, I think what the, I'm the, saying. The point I was trying to make a little bit's okay is about like the whole idea behind representative de- democracy. I think was my point. Yeah, okay. is how it we live quote unquote in a representative of the democracy mm-hmm. but it's not actually being representative that yeah. that's the yeah. that's the thing that i'm trying to make yeah that's and, the point I'm like trying to make. i i think a point i'm trying to make is that i want government to be blind in the sense that i don't want our representatives 
deciding that this group of people over here needs some help for whatever reason, because I'm taking interest in them because I am the same race as them or whatever, I, as, I, as opposed to, you know, those people over there who have their own problems that are maybe just as, as bad as this group over here. But that's not, I don't think that's the role of, of me as a representative of the people. Well, okay. What do you think? I mean, what would, so you can get some more talking time in. What would you say your role as a representative is then? Other than, unless this is your own, this is the only point, is the securing of rights. Well, there's more to it because obviously there's, you know, how to use, because we do collect taxes, how to use tax money and stuff like that. So, of course, there's there's certain things. There's a bunch of other stuff involved like that. Um, hmm. I mean, too much to... Too much to get into. Okay. And it depends on what kind of representative you are. I mean, it depends on what part of the government that you're in. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to speak. I'm just trying to speak against the idea, I guess, that the government should be representing certain parts of the uh, parts of the population. And, and I'm saying that that's what it is. I'm saying that's exactly what it is. Like being a representative of mm-hmm. Kentucky you are representing the people that live in that state, whatever they are. Well, that's the whole point is that fine, but since those people can't have a say yeah. in any of the laws, any of the changes or how the government's run, you send X person to be your representative in the government. Like you're going to take what, what we think as a people or maybe what we think should change or whatever. Yeah, but we don't all that, agree. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's why in we, fact none of us probably well, i know that's why we try to vote on someone who will have our best interest in mind that's what people but, will talk about like oh i'm gonna do this for you we're gonna lower taxes blah 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 blah. none of that shit happens because of how government works yeah but the whole idea is that i'm gonna go to what like the whole idea of every senator is like i'm gonna go to washington for your best interest because that's what i do yeah every politician i mean i shouldn't say every but you know in, in the past however long i've been alive however long you've been alive they say, vote for me. I'll take your problems to Washington so we can get them changed. Right. Do we have a problem with, with drugs? I'll go to Washington. We'll get it fixed. Do you have a problem with jobs? I'll go to Washington. We'll get it fixed. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point right. of the representatives that we that we well, uh, and they, hire in the government. And, and they never do because maybe that's not what they're supposed to be doing. But I don't know. I, 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 think, I think they're not doing it for other reasons. But may, maybe that's not how it should be done. But I think that that's how it was written i think that's how it was portrayed is how it was going to happen it just yeah. doesn't happen that way because of moneyed interests because of you know the corporate system of politics uh you know corruption in general and just the fact that the people we represent they also have their own views mm-hmm. you know we're not sending robots that we program with what we think they get in there they learn things that we don't know from a state level mm-hmm. or a city level or whatever you know, we, we could send a representative from the county to Frankfurt to say, oh, we have this problem, we have this problem. Mm-hmm. And, th- and then they they could march into to the, 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 the Capitol building in Frankfurt, which, for those who don't know, is the capital of Kentucky, and say, uh, the constituents in my dis- district or whatever, they say that the water quality is bad and blah, blah, blah. We need to allocate funds to fix that because of the public, uh, the water system or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the... The, the, the House and the Senate and the state are like, we don't have any money because this problem cropped up in this different part of the state and their problem is worse than yours. And then that representative can try and fight for what they what, what they feel like needs to be done for their constituents or they can, you know, just go along with uh, how it, it the, the, the rest of the state is saying the funds need to be allocated or they can, you know, and I, I feel like that's that's how it it, it is and how it how it is run because we all have, I don't know. And I I think the big thing that that you and I don't agree on is the fact that you need someone to go and say like, to, I guess, whine about your problems to the big government. Maybe that's the distinction is that, you know, we live in, in such a, an insulated world, but that is encroached on by government. I don't know. I feel I'm just rambling. I, at I don't this point. know. I, I got so many things going through my head right now that I'm not even sure. Yeah, Oof. I'm not even sure what to really say at this point. Chalk this up to one of those uh, not very clean 
<laughs> episodes of the Yeah, the I, I mean, there's there's clearly like a bunch of stuff we are disagreeing about here, but I'm not sure we've really gotten down to it still. Maybe maybe we should we should do like the main podcast, and then if it gets to this deadlock thing, we could do like an after show. Yeah, where it, where you can listen to the main one, and then you know listen to the after <laughs> show if you want to hear more. But yeah, maybe I I don't <clears> know. <throat> I feel like we've just talked about too much. Maybe we turned it into too big of a conversation. I Probably. think it brought too many different things into it. And I mean, there's obviously like I I can't even I don't know enough about the intricacies of government to to say much about some of the stuff that we've talked about. Like, I don't know exactly what our senators and representatives do, and I, mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know how the sausage is made. So, <laughs> Jimmy Dean <song>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But, hey, I think that, I mean, I, what I would like, I mean, I, I shouldn't say it like that, but this has obviously made me more interested in learning exactly how uh, my representatives do their work do their job yeah like what they actually do you yeah know? me yeah same here i i do feel like i need to know more about that um and i think that may, maybe my idea is the wrong one mm-hmm. and it's just that's my perception of it yeah and if i digged into it a little more i'd actually learn like oh representative representative democracy is actually supposed to be like this not how i think and then i would have to you know yeah uh. And again, like some of the stuff that you've said, I don't have a problem with, but other stuff, as I've said, I, I 100% disagree with. And it's it's really hard to figure out exactly why, where and why. What, where and why? Yeah. But that was kind of the point of the whole podcast in the first place, is that we were going to try to get to the bottom of some of that stuff. And obviously, we're not always going to succeed at it, which is no. which is fine. Yeah. Um, That's good. I think, think this was good. And the fact that I, I'll, so I will keep this in. Uh, the whole idea of doing a what have you been thinking about? Yeah, I think it worked. But yeah, we got we've we've certainly found a topic, and we both got to talk about yeah. stuff we've been thinking about. Yeah. So and to the audience, um, one idea that we had for the the show going forward is to do a short like back and forth, just to kind of open up the air to some random topics, see if we can land on one and discuss. But then if not, we would have you know some broader discussion some other topics that we're really interested in but i think this was a good uh a good beta test for that yeah this wasn't a, it could have gone a lot worse i think yeah i think it could go for a long time too but we're not <laughs> we're not joe rogan so i think uh unless you have any closing um things that you want to like any points that you want to reiterate or any any things you want to try and refute uh, been, in the last yeah I've been, I've been trying to think in the last couple minutes if there's anything just to sum up what i'm trying to say but I think I'm just going to leave it at that for now. I'm okay. sure we'll get well, into this sort of stuff again. Let me ask you one last question, and then we can end it on that. Sure. Do you think that <clears> – <throat> would you rather live – regardless of country size <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Would you rather live in a representative democracy like we have today or a more direct democracy like it's in Switzerland? Uh, what we have today, 100%. And that was kind of the original point that we were arguing about is, yes, I, I, I do not want to – a direct democracy where the majority can infringe upon my rights. Okay. That's, I guess that's how, that was really the only point I was trying to make. (laughs) Yeah. And I went on this long tangent about Mitch McConnell, man, hopefully he gets voted out, but it, it, it was relevant. Yeah. We just started talking about too many things. I think, I think we should revisit this topic of representative democracy since it's the government that we live under. Um, well, I think maybe yeah, you can flesh I, out those ideas. I think but. we just need to talk more about what each of us believes the role of the government in our lives should be. Okay. Because I did kind of want to respond to that stuff you were saying about the government kind of picking you up when you fall down and taking care of stuff that's not your fault and that kind of thing. Because I disagree with that quite a bit. And uh, maybe next time we get into this, we can use that as a starting point or, okay. or just talk about what should the government be doing in our own personal lives and what shouldn't it be doing? I like that. I like that idea. But uh, for Subject to Change, this has been Matt. And this is Chad. You guys have a great day. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>